Introducing Apple Vision Pro. Apple Vision Pro. Apple Vision Pro. Apple's Vision Pro provides a glimpse of the future. So I think I saw the future. Got to use the Vision Pro. I've spent the last month digging into everything that is to know about the Apple Vision Pro headset and operating system. And I've found some cryptic hints and clues from Apple. For example, this weird hologram of a Vision Pro user in full spatial 3D is just the tip of the iceberg. We're gonna be able to stand around and write on a whiteboard with a team that's around the world, but it'll feel as if we're all in the same room. After studying over 50 WW developer sessions, dissecting the Vision OS SDK, and reading piles of Apple documentation, I have five of the most interesting secrets that Apple is telling to those who listen carefully. Number five is going to blow your mind. Hey, my name's Akash. I have a decade of product experience. I'm a Harvard MBA grad and angel invested in startups. On this channel, we talk about ways to level up your product management skills and career. Let's go. The price is actually telling us a lot about who the Vision Pro is actually made for. There's a very popular book called Crossing the Chasm. The quick recap is that every product and technology goes through an adoption life cycle. At first, the innovators and early adopters buy in. And only after can the majority and laggards follow. Meta has been wrongly trying to build a VR product directly for majority adoption without first building a compelling vision for the early market. Apple instead is targeting only the innovators for now, and the price is a signal for the majority that the product just isn't ready for them yet. The Vision Pro can be compared to the HoloLens, which costs $3,500, and the Magic Leap 2, which costs $3,300. Both of those headsets are only targeted towards a small set of enthusiasts. In the future, Apple's bet will be to make XR so compelling that people are willing to pay a lot more for a headset than they are today. We've already seen the strategy from Apple with the AirPods. These were priced way above the market of competitors and at the high end of the spectrum. But over time, people have realized that these AirPods have so many compelling features that they just can't live without and would be willing to pay more for. And so the Vision Pro is the Tesla Roadster of XR. For most people, you'll want to wait for the Model 3 version. This one was a real shocker for me and apparently a lot of people. One thing I'm surprised on a little bit is that Apple did go for having the external puck. Apple isn't a company that's known for having extra wires and cables hanging around their devices. I mean, just look at the latest iMac. They built a new proprietary power cable and module just so they can transmit power and ethernet in a single cable rather than two. So the fact that the first version of the Vision Pro has an external battery pack is telling us that Apple is going to add a lot more features and technology to that cable and module. From some of the close-up videos that we've seen, there's clearly more functionality in this than just an external battery pack. In the future, in addition to power, this thing could also be used for internet, connectivity, and more I.O. Just wait for all the dongles that you'll have to connect to the Vision Pro. But be thankful that you have to connect them to the external pack and not on your head. So during the keynote, Apple talked about four key use cases for the Vision Pro. One, you're no longer limited by a display. Two, capture photos and videos in a completely new way. Three, entertain yourself with immersive movies, shows, and games. And four, connect with people as if you're sharing the same space. These are quite broad and definitely meant to be broad. Being the first iteration of a whole new product category, Apple doesn't want to limit developers' creativity in any way. We had seen this with the Apple Watch actually. Tim Apple first announced that the watch is a precise timepiece. One that is precise. An intimate way to connect. We invented new intimate ways to connect and communicate. And third, a health and fitness companion. Comprehensive health and fitness device. Now, 10 years later, it's clear that developers and customers have taken this platform in a whole new direction with health and fitness as the first and primary use case, and then notifications and glanceable information as a second. The good news here is that Apple is quick to adapt their products to how they're actually being used. For Vision OS, Apple has given developers a lot of frameworks and guidelines for designing and building experiences related to the four main use cases. However, the future of Vision OS is now in the hands of early adopters and developers. One of the things that became very obvious from going through all of Apple's materials 
is that the Vision Pro hardware and headset was actually only known to a small select set of people. The hardware can only be seen in the WWDC opening keynote and the platform State of the Union address. Dozens of sessions about the Vision OS platform, developer tools, and tutorials don't actually show or mention the Vision Pro at all. This means that the teams building the software were pretty much isolated from the teams that were building the hardware. While this may sound simple, the actual execution of this means that the hardware capabilities have to be clear, simulatable, and state-of-the-art. Most of the software was probably designed, built, and tested without ever touching a Vision Pro headset. And for third-party developers, this should come as great news because it speaks to the stability of the Vision OS platform and the scalability for the next decade as the hardware adapts, iterates, and even reduces. So Apple's now come up with a way for the Vision Pro's internal cameras and sensors to map a user's irises to unlock the device. They claim that no two people have the same iris patterns, not even identical twins. And Apple spent all of 41 seconds in the keynote talking about it. Compare this to previous keynotes where Apple spent 405 seconds introducing Touch ID and 920 seconds introducing Face ID. So this is an indication of just how much technology and innovation is packed into the Vision Pro and Vision OS. Apple did say that they filed over 5,000 patents and some reports actually put the R&D costs for the Vision Pro at over $40 billion. So Apple is definitely looking at the long term for Vision rather than just this first generation product. Rumor in the supply chain is that Apple reduced the Vision Pro sales targets from a million devices to just 150,000 devices. But even at a million devices sold and the high price of $3,500, that only comes to $3.5 billion in revenue. Compare that to Apple's $400 billion of revenue in 2022. It's just a drop in the bucket. So this is really the start of a gradual change that's going to make or break Apple for the next 20 years. The Vision Pro isn't going to be perfect. In fact, it's going to have a lot of flaws and improvements to be made. And that's exciting because we are at the precipice of a whole new generation of product and technology where we're going to see massive strides and changes every year and with every version and generation of this product. I can't wait to get my hands on the Vision Pro and I'll see you guys in the next video. Check out my brand new podcast series where I interview stellar product managers at amazing top tech companies about their journeys.